Americans will fight with all of our might for your right to develop nuclear weapons. Race like an athlete, run his pace. Who's gonna change it? Race the mic, get lace. Gerard, great match and a personal triumph for you. You must be pleased with the way you took your goals. Well, I always said I was going to let me football do the talking. You know, very pleased with the result. Very pleased for the team then, Nelson. You know. And they must be doubly satisfied with all the personal problems you've been having lately. I don't think about anything like that, you know. Just uh, keep my head down, let me feet do the talking. <laughs> and the chance of Chelsea next? Well, it's one game at a time, you know. Very pleased for the fans to keep my head down, let me feet do the talking. Pleased for the guys, you know, keep my head down, let me football do the talking. Please, for everyone connected with the club, you know, keep me head down. Do be talking on the pitch, you know, just keep me head down. Wayne, thanks That's for... Knock, knock, knock. Am I intruding, Charles? <laughs> Not at all, Sheridan. Shirley told me you'd be popping by. Is it time for a brandy? Uh, 29 minutes past six, Charles. No, I didn't think so. Is that all it is? Oh, gosh. Yes, of course. Goodness me, no. Please. Thank you. I've actually come with some other sad news, I'm afraid, Charles. Poor old Bunny Armstrong Miller popped his clogs last night. Oh, that's terrible news. Mm. <sighs> I could do with a brandy. Is it that time? 6.30, uh, <laughs> yes. Yes, I can he conked out in the night. Thankfully, it was very quick, but poor old Joyce is in a terrible stew. Oh, it must have been a terrible shock. Yes, a frightful business. How old was Bunny? Uh, he was only 85. He's still very young. Very young. Oh, poor Joyce. She'll be at a total loss. I mean, after all, they've been married for, what, 40 or 45 years? 40 or 45 years. 40 years, 45 years. 40 or 45 years? 40 or 45 years. 40 or 45 years. How long have you and Caroline been married? 40 years, 45 years? Oh, uh, 40 40 45 years. 40 or 45 years. 40 or 45 years, yes. 40 or 45 years. What about you, Charles? It's 40 45 years? 40 45 years. 45 years. 40, 45 years. 40, 45 years. 45 years. 40, 45 years. 40, 45 years. 40, 45 years. 40, 45 years. Terrible. I mean, terrible shock. A terrible shock. Did he have a condition? Oh, no, no, no. He was uh, fit as a butcher's dog. I mean, he whopped me at tennis last week. 6 2 6 love. He wasn't still playing club tennis at his age, surely. No, uh, no, 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 no. No, he only played three times a week, and he only raced Austin Healy's for the last three or four years, and he never went out of cows for more than a fortnight at a stretch. Well, I suppose there comes a time in all of our lives when we have to take account of our age, Sheridan, when one has to say goodbye to the Matterhorn and hello to the Peak District. Yes, <laughs> when one has to climb down from the Montrachet to the Pinot Grigio, as it were. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far, Sheridan. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Her Majesty will be terribly upset. Of course, yes. I mean, she and Bunny have known each other for what? 40, 40 45 years, could oh, 40 years, 45 years. 40 years, 45 years? 40, 45 years. Oh, 40, 40, 40, 40, 45 years. Mm. I top you up. Mm. It's a very good brandy, Charles. How, uh, how old is it? Uh, 40 years, 45 years. 45 years. 45 years. 45 years. Interesting to think, isn't it, that when this brandy was cast, Bunny would have been, what, 40, 45 years old? Well, I suppose if it's 40 years old, he would have been 45. If it's 45 years old, he would have been 40. So, 45 years. 45 years. 45 years. Poor old Bunny. We can now go over to the Philharmonic Hall and hear from Sir Simon Rattle. Simon, thanks for talking to us. It was pretty tough out there tonight. Do you always think you're in with a chance? Yeah, well, you know, we're always confident, you know. I mean, I think we've done great, you know. We took a lot of flack. 
lately, but you know, sports are off the dogs back, that. I didn't quite catch that, but uh, did you feel the audience came round in the end? Uh, very much so, yeah, you know, I mean, you know, I always said I was going to just let me bat on do the talking, because that's what I do. Tremendous support from the violins, although I don't like to see them. Just keep me head down, do what I do best, you know, to be fair. And then the second half, you look behind you, what you got? Vojak, Debussy, and did you like Debussy though, don't you though? Simon, you're the lead positive coach and man of the match. Here's your magnum Thanks Shanta. very much. <laughs> oh, what an amazing view. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't it be incredible just to, to have a house, you know, right here, oh. right on this spot? Don't. Beg your pardon, house was he wanted? Uh, yes. Dad, as a young couple, want a house right here. Can we do that? Want an house? Yeah. What, here? Yeah. What now? Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, we can do that. Got a bit of 4B2B, 4B2B on the track. Dad! <laughs> it's not our land. Oh, don't worry about that. Dad will sort out the deeds of permission. I oh, know somebody works in the planning department. <laughs> Well, how much do ah, we... Um... don't worry about it. You enjoy yourself. Be lucky. Have a nice day. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. We're going to be able to do that ring road round basketball this afternoon, Dad. Depends on the traffic, don't you, son? <laughs> Look who's here. Hi, Uncle Paul. Hello, Kirsty, old girl. Come on, that looks good. What are you drinking now? Lemonade. Oh. Do you want some? Yum. Anything stronger? No. Ah, don't worry. Emergency supplies. This is Sonia, Uncle Paul. Hello, old thing. Irish that up? No, thanks. Yeah, quite right. It is a bit early, isn't it? <laughs> so, what are you making now? It's a rabbit puzzle. <laughs> Do you buy that with the tenor I gave you Christmas? No. Granny bought it for me. So, you still have that tenor, do you? Um... It was a postal order. Oh, yes. Any chance you could just lend it to me for a few days? The thing is, I've had a bit of rotten luck on a hedge fund and... I bought some stationery with it. Oh, did you? Uh, yes. But you blew the whole lot on stationery? <laughs> the whole bloody ten pounds? Yes. What about you, Sonia? When's your birthday? Last week. Bingo! Uh, <laughs> if you can see a way to advancing me that tenor, she'll give you her stationery as collateral. But, Uncle Paul! Well, you admitted you spent it on that. I've got my pocket money. It's only two pounds. But you can have that. That's the stuff, old girl. <laughs> you could learn from her, you know, Kirsty. Remember, to give is better than to receive and all that Jesus what have you. <laughs> And I've got something for you. Sonia, you choose. Bingo! You get the mint, and you get the pipe cleaner. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. What fun we're having. Box for Colin Dexter, your Labour candidate. Box for Colin Dexter. Hello, how are you today? Colin Dexter, your Labour candidate. Hello, how are you today? I'm good. Hello, how are you today? Good. Hello, how are you today? We're just fine. Hello, how are you today? I'm fine. Uh, can I count on your vote? Well, I'm sure you could, young man, but we don't actually have the right to vote in your wonderful country. <laughs> We're from Bedilly Boing, out of Idaho. <laughs> I'm Pammy, and this buffoon is Ronald. And we are so pleased to meet with you on our way to Tate Modern to see the famous lump of wood. Have a good time. Hello, how are you today? 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 Say, this is a great picture of you, Colin. Yeah, it's, it's Colin, actually. No, it's Colin. 
C-O-L-I-N. Colin, it's a privilege to meet you, Colin. You are one fine, upstanding African Englishman. <laughs> Actually, I'm not an African Englishman. Well, you're not an African-American, Colin. We can tell that by your cute little accent. Uh, by the way, you pronounce Colin wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a Londoner. Whoa! Oh. Colin's an African-Englishman cockney man. <laughs> and you consider yourself at home. You gotta pick a bucket or two, eh, Colin? Especially in your line of work. <laughs> Just joking, Colin. We have great respect for those who seek high office. Oh, we're big fans of Barack Obama. We actually saw him when he came down to Badidly Boy. He was such a gentleman. Then he went on to charm the good folks as Slippery Newt Fuddleroo Dorado. <laughs> It's no wonder he cleaned up at Bromide County. Am I right, Colin? Damn, he's right, Colin. Good luck, Colin. We are with you, sir. Cole went for president. Isn't he pretty? What a guy. at your front door. Hello, how are you today? Good, thanks, yeah. Very good. That's my birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. Cappuccino, please. Large or small? A large, please. Doge cappuccino. I think you were some kilometers away in your head. Yeah, yeah, I was just thinking about things. Tovi glandau de la mia yak buomi nachu okohani ushau shustabu. Nia. Tens terafat set nia. Cappuccino? Thank you very much. Uh, how much is that? No, please, it is your birthday. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, crikey. Oh, my head hurts like buggery, man. Oh, oh. I went down last night with my friend Hennis, right? Oh, you'd love Hennis, man. He's such a good guy, yeah? He's only got one arm, because once when he was drunk, he attacked the combine harvester. <laughs> and another time when he was a little bit pissed, he tried to make love to a Ford Focus, his exhaust pipe. But it was still hot, so he's got a withered dick. <laughs> and he's only got one eye, because he pulled the other one out with a fork for charity. I love him, man. He's such a good guy. Welcome again to Rap Sunday here on Radio 3. And I've got a letter here from Cyril Parker uh, from the Brookwater Farm Estate up there in Tottenham. He says he loves the show, but that we are not so much hip-hop as hip-hop. <laughs> <laughs> we get where you're coming from, Mr yes, Parker. <laughs> got us bang to rights there, actually. But, anyway. you know, someone has to keep the rap flag flying here <laughs> over Radio 3 House, and that Solomon has been bequeathed to us. Indeed it has, Henry, and that last track there was, of course, Africa Bambata with Planet Rock. And as everyone and his wife has speculated, that is, of course, a recycling of Kraftwerk's Trans-Europe Express. <laughs> oh, don't get me started on recycling, 
and me, I mean, where we live in Cock Fosters, you've got these three <laughs> different boxes, you know. One's a light blue, one's a dark blue, one's a normal blue. The papers are in one, the cans are... It's all so confusing. I told Rachel, I said, if the council gave us three boxes in different colours, a yellow box, a red box and a green box, it would improve our quality of life by 26%. <laughs> she just looked at me like this, you know. I think she'd want the quality of her life improved by 26%, wouldn't you, Clarence? You but would, you would. You know, women, I mean, they're a law unto themselves, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> they are. I mean, we're hardly the first men in history to regard the female as what I call uh, EWAs. That's enigmas with attitude. <laughs> <laughs> no, but on a serious note, Clarence, um, if you study closely the works of Tupac, Slick Rick, Biggie Smalls, The Tribe Called Quest and The Jungle Brothers, you'll see that they've all found the female psyche puzzling while simultaneously being able to appreciate the delights of their butts. <laughs> Indeed, Henry, that's very true, and I've got a little something here to appreciate from my Rachel. Uh, it's not her butt. It's a fine example of her bait Alaska. Oh, would you look at that? How wonderful! I know, it's magnificent, oh. isn't it? <laughs> and what better way to spend an evening, eh, listeners, than a slice of Rachel's baked Alaska? Slippers on... And NWA's niggers for life. <laughs> That'll do it for me. <laughs> Cheers, drama crap. Oh, that's a good idea. That does look good. There's not enough cognac in here for my liking. <laughs> oh, oh, I think it's all gone in here. <laughs> well, the highlight of the dance programme was Adam Cooper, the star of Swan Lake. <laughs> Adam, you pulled out all the stops tonight, didn't you? Yeah, I'm sweating like a pig here now, you know. Uh, <laughs> tell the Tchaikovsky's the gaffer like. He's done great music, uh, great dance, great choreography, great ballet, you know, and uh, also credit to you, uh, thanks very much. Um, Adam, you forgot to finish your sentence. Yeah, credit to Sophie and Sylvie, you know, she's done a great old day tonight. People said they couldn't replace Darcy, but they did do that, though, didn't they, though? And <laughs> credit to Darcy, she's gone out there and she's done the bizzo. Do you ever get bored of dancing the classical roles? He's all can I, yeah. You know, credit to Matty Bourne, he's got the vision, you know, he's still up there, like, he's, he's, he's the gaffer, really, isn't he? And, you know, tonight, going out with Bourne, I'm going to get fucking smashed. Thanks very much. <laughs> See you have a sweet tooth, sir. On the contrary, madam, I manufacture confectionery. These are merely samples. Do you have a sweet tooth, madam? My late husband had a sweet tooth before the reaper came for him with the rabies. <laughs> Perhaps you've heard of some of my confections. Perhaps. Mintables? No. Fludge? Afraid not. Kitteris Catteris. <laughs> that I recall. Milky Boy? Doesn't ring a bell. Cleanis Pastels? No. Blurm? Afraid not. Crunt Bar? No. Pubal Drops? Afraid not. Shabbat Spume? Not that I recall. Tapany Batiquims. <laughs> Bum gums. Are you lodging here tonight, sir? Well, what are your rates? I can let you have a room for one and three if you leave no stools in the chamber pot. <laughs> Very well. I mean, she can put a lot in her mouth for Ivica. <laughs> oh, 
she can't eat some chocolates as well. It's not possible. Oh my gosh, the impossible has become possible as she has gobbled up the chocolates in front of this stupid girl. <laughs> <laughs> Now the very tall, handsome man wants to kiss her. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Look out for that big muddy puddle because you're in a white dress. Oh no. Oh, the expected has happened. And a big car has gone straight through the puddle. So she has gone very muddy after all. It's funny, but it's also sad. It's exactly the kind of thing that might actually happen in real life. Oh my gosh, <laughs> here comes the weird one. He's talking about having sex with his livestock. <laughs> I think he must be a little bit crazy. <laughs> or maybe he's just a fictional character and we shouldn't think about it too deeply. <laughs> well, luckily, the vicar's had a bath and she's in her pajamas telling a funny joke about Jesus to this stupid girl. <laughs> but this, this stupid one doesn't get the joke. <laughs> Which is also funny, so that is double the humor. I tell you, if I lived in that village, right? I would not get any work done because I would be laughing all the time. <laughs> Hi, nice Miller. Hi, Marcus. <laughs> Mwah. Mwah. How are you? Amazing. How are you? Fantastic. How are you? Fabulous. How are you? Mwah. Incredible. How are you? Fantastic. How are you? Mwah. Top notch. Mwah. Hi. Welcome to Modern Wank. Oh, this is amazing. Thanks. It's full of modern wank. You've still got your old shop there, haven't you? Oh, yeah, there's still a market for old shit. It's just the current trend is to mix old shit with modern wank. It's ironic. I've always wondered what irony was. Apparently it's the new black. You're so profound. Thank you. I'm being ironic. Cool. Anyway, I wanted some modern wank to mix in with the old shit that I bought from you before. Anything in particular? Uh, I quite like a sofa for my study. Your study? Yeah. Oh, right. What are you studying? Your navel? Yes. Excellent. Okay, well, um, this is a very expensive range of wank. Oh, I quite like it, but I'm not sure the colour's sophisticated enough for me. Oh, no, this is sophisticated. Oh, right, of course. Silly me. Silly you. Stupid, cretinous, idiot you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I drifted off there into my thoughts. <laughs> well, have to forgive me. I was up all night shagging some coked-up model. Oh, poor you. Poor me. And I've got to go out again tonight. It's my girlfriend's birthday. She wants me to take her out for a bloody meal. I mean, some women are so needy. Oh, poor you. Poor, poor me. So if you could cough up and get out of my face, I can go down the pub and have a kick. <laughs> Sorry. So that's six thousand pounds. I feel guilty if I haven't kept you so long. Oh, why? Just come back and buy some more wank soon. Thank you so much. Well, bye bye you. Bye bye you. Get out. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Any island, because this island is Clarkson Island. And unlike any other island, Clarkson Island has the greatest number of Clarksons in the world. In fact, Clarkson Island has a staggering 248 Clarksons per square mile in the world. And that's quite a lot of Clarksons. And the great thing about Clarksons is that we're great. There's even a Midi Clarkson, like me! <laughs> and a Midi Clarkson, like me. We're not actually Clarksons as such. But we talk a bit like it. <laughs> in the world. And probably the thing that's most like your genuine Clarkson 
is we pause in the middle of our sentences. In the world. But that's not all. They've even got vintage models like me with a bit too much hair and an ill-fitting jacket. There's also a triple denim disaster of a class. Despite the overwhelming preponderance of Clarksons here on Clarkson Island, there aren't enough Clarksons. Which is why I've come here to see Jeff, who farms Clarksons. <laughs> a farmy thing. Hello, Jeremy. Hello, Jeff. Now, I know you're interested in farming Clarksons. Well, if you look behind us here, you'll see a fresh batch of spring Clarksons. They're free range, and uh, they're noisy beggars, aren't they? Come on now, Clarksy. We have to clip them twice a year, otherwise their woolly hair gets clogged up with all the shit that comes out their mouths, see? He's a lively one here. Hey, you what? Oh, my God. I'm a slaphead. Oh, look at this, look. Now, I've only folded this little Clarkson this morning. See how unsteady he is on his legs, look. But there you are, look, he's up. And already he's polluting the environment. <laughs> These are some of my battery Clarksons. <laughs> Clarkson 5. You even get the old gay Clarkson. This is my favourite car in the world because I'm a window dresser at Harvey Nichols. Oh, my God! What do you do with them? Well, I generally spray them with D-Gay. <laughs> Girls' car. Now, this is a Maserati Quattro Porte. Quattro Porte is what the Italians call four doors when they're not surrendering to your granny. We feed them mainly on a diet of raw meat and nonsense. <laughs> what about that lot? Oh, crikey. They're asylum-seeking Claxons. <laughs> they come over here and try and ticket our cars. My God! <laughs> Don't worry, Stig will sort them out. Go on, Stig. Come on, boy. <laughs> Go on, Stig. That's what. Come on, Stig. Mount him up. Go on. Good boy, Stick. <laughs> there are more Clarksons here on Clarkson Island than there are lesbians in a whole food shop. <laughs> What's going to happen to them? One or two will write columns for the quality newspapers. Some will write autobiographies. The odd one will get on primetime TV, but the vast majority will end up on Dave. <laughs> Production of flat screen televisions, so we can 